I didn't think I'd get to where I've got to today when I started climbing. So when I was pretty young, I wasn't that great at climbing. I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like stand out better than anyone else. I was just, I just enjoyed doing it, but I also enjoyed a lot of other things. My dad and my great uncle, you know, I'd just go out top roping with them. I was really young, so they'd just set up and I'd just climb. I didn't, there was kind of no focus on technique or anything when I was that age, I was just going climbing. I'm standing on nothing. You are actually standing on something, Jim. You're standing on air. I was never that good when I first started. Like the first competition I entered, I came last, and, but that kind of didn't really phase me. I had no expectations. But it didn't put me off either. So the next year I came back and I actually won that same competition the following year. So that was a bit of a surprise. And I think, I think now there's been a lot of achievements that I've had that I've never thought that much of or been that excited about but I remember winning that first regional round of the Youth Climbing Series still kind of stands out as one of my I don't know, proudest moments I guess just because at the time it meant so much. I have to try really hard to be good at climbing I think I have to train pretty hard so it didn't, didn't come naturally to me like I definitely the successes that I've had, there's been a lot of like failures with them as well. I just want to get as good as I can to like feel good about putting a lot of effort in something and getting results from it that you're happy about like in, inside and outside. My climbing began in the Lake District. We used to come here on, on holiday in the summer and uh, in the Easter and stay with my dad's aunt and uncle because I loved it so much here and I came up so often. I had, I had some pretty good memory, well, I had really good memories of my childhood up here and I was, I'm pretty fortunate to have been brought up the way I did and to have been able to come to places like this to like develop a love for the outdoors and considering I was from London. I'd obviously forgotten a lot of the stuff. It, it wasn't as familiar as it was when I was younger, but as soon as I was back up here, everything came back to me. The Fisher Ground area is another place that I climbed at a lot when I was younger. It was cool to come back and realise how much more climbing there was there than just that slab that we used to top rope on. There's, there's load. There's a really good, like middle grade bouldering circuit there. It was, it was a fun, enjoyable day. This is quite a remote part of the Lake District, but because it's the part that I've always come to, I feel like it's the part that and I, I know the most and it's the part that kind of I have the biggest connection with but when I come back here it always feels quite special.
free climbing, the things I did when I was like six years old. Obviously, the difficulties like irrelevant it's not well it's just been enjoyable really it's been really nice to kind of go back to all the places where I started climbing and do the climbs and also ones that I'd looked at as a kid and never been able to try and then do those now. Still only 19 this year I'm just going to be the first year I'm doing the full senior world cup circuit so maybe that will spur me on to keep going with the competitions but this is just the beginning I guess. It took me a little while to like get the ball rolling. The first few comps didn't go as well as I would have liked, I think. The last two World Cups uh, went pretty well and I managed to make a semi-final, so. but it was a pretty intense month. One World Cup every weekend throughout July, so yeah, I think I definitely needed some time off from the comps for a while, which made me decide to come here. Norway was a place I'd never come and climbed in before and Gav had showed me photos and told me like stories of trips he, he'd had when he came here and I think obviously it's got a lot of hype online from you know Adam doing a lot of hard first ascents here and it just being a place of a lot of hard routes so I thought I'd come and give some a try. Walking up to the cave you have this really dramatic scenery and on the way up on your right hand side you've got the like big stretch of sea and all these little islands and little beaches and coves and stuff, it's really like something out of a film. As soon as I asked Gav and Gaz, they were psyched straight away. You know, I've climbed with them for such a long time, but it's not often that I get to go away with them, so it's been really fun just to like hang out with them again, especially as I've moved away from London. They've got so much experience, so they're always swapping beta or suggesting some things I could do differently, which is always really useful. They're always, you know, playing around, so it's nice, it's like, not, not serious, but they know when it's time to, like, focus and, I don't know, try hard on route, they kind of know when to just act differently depending on the situation. It's been pretty inspirational seeing Jim here in the cave. When he moved up to Sheffield and started doing the competitions, um, we sort of lost track a little bit of where he's at level-wise. The last time I saw him was doing his circuits on the way, so obviously there was a lot of power and a lot of strength there. But now seeing it this last week or so, I've transferred onto rock and seeing it in the results that he's had a little bit in competitions, some semi-finals, and also on sighting like up to 8B plus, it's like, yeah, he's definitely <laughs> stepped it up a couple of gears. He's come on so, so far, and this trip, the pinnacle of that really, sort of just showing how, how good he really is, coming to a different rock type that he's used to, like he normally climbs on limestone, and then converting that ability into, into granite climbing, which is a very different style, and just climbing things super, super fast. The thing that I've always admired from Jim and noticed from Jim is the fact he's very intuitive with his climbing. He doesn't think what he's doing, it just happens. Um, and I think that plays when you get higher into the grades. Without looking, without thinking, his feet are in exactly the right place, on exactly the right holds. Um, and that, I think, is one of the bigger Obviously, he's very strong and really good climber, but the fact that he can, his movement on rocks, just, I've never seen anything like it really. It's really cool to watch. Our relationship hasn't changed over the years. I think it's just been the same because Jim's just been the same person, basically. And I think when you find the younger climbers that are really doing better and are going to have a, a a better future in the sport are climbers that are very self-motivated and, and almost grown up at a very young age so that they can learn faster and communicate better within climbing and that's probably why we've climbed with Jim quite a lot and Gav has spent quite a lot of time with Jim as well because he's just, a, just Jim. <laughs> Thank you.
I don't think Jim does take himself too seriously at all. Um, I don't think I know any climbers that fool around and don't put pressure on themselves as much as Jim. Like every climber puts these pressures on them on themselves and watching Jim trying hard routes this week you can see the pressures aren't there he's got this belief that he can do it so the so that takes the pressure off his climbing it's like just having fun he's like I'll get up there and try that I'll get up there and try that it's, it's, all the pressure is gone from his from his climbing so with that belief then he can fool around and have fun um, which is awesome to see. I think the responsibility to how Jim's turned out as a climber is, is not really down to any one thing. I think it's been down to um, maybe the, the scene that he was involved in in London, but also like lots of people that he's met along the way, along the journey. I think it's a really important thing for, for climbers of any age when they come into the sport. If they land on the feet with the right people around them, they'll progress and do well. And if they're just meet the wrong people who are not necessarily motivated in the right direction, they won't go anywhere. It takes a lot of motivation to do everything yourself. It takes, and it's a lot easier with a lot of help from people around you. I think the climbing here is definitely really unique. There's not many places in the world where you climb on such varied terrain. You know, on the left-hand side, you've got like long vertical routes, some short ones. In the middle of the cave, you've got like some steeper, short, boldy ones, and then you can have horizontal roof cl climbs or as well, because it's so steep and the rock type, it's just always staying pretty dry, even if it's really rainy. Valkyrie is a pretty unique route. It kind of follows a, an overhanging prow through a roof, like, 20 meters or so and it's just like you fridge hug along this prow. There's not many places in the world where I think you'd find a climb like that. see Jim climbing and projecting in the cave now is inspirational to be honest. Um, I can, you can't take any, um, any um, gratification to yourself from being part of the journey but it's, it's um, very satisfying to see somebody be able to do that and achieve what he's achieving now. Helping Jim out in his climbing and sort of um, pushing him forwards, I'm not sure how much I'm doing anymore. So I just really like being around Jim. I think he does feed off other people and I think people he knows and respects. It helps him along a little bit more I think. Potentially he's always asking for like bits of opinions and stuff like that and I think that will always help help Jim out I think. Odin's eye is an 8C+, which climbs through a really clear eye feature in the cave. It was one that I definitely wanted to do during the trip, just because I think it 
in my opinion, it's like the line of the cave is the one which looks the best. It consists of three boulder problems, again, split by uh, easier sections of climbing, and it's really about how well you can recover and arrive at each boulder feeling fresh enough to get through it. Will Jim go in the future? Obviously, I think he's going to still do competitions, and I think that's a, it's a driving, like not a major driving force for Jim, but I think he enjoys it. He's a, a rock climber through and through. I think he just fully comes alive when he's out on the rocks. I think he's got a, a lot more, a lot more climbing in his in his tank. He's got a long way to go. He's only like he's only 19 years old, I think, and. Um, and he's climbing hard grades pretty quick. Um, hopefully he'll embrace, you know, a slightly more challenging project, something that he's got to dig deeper within himself. I think it'd be really good to see him go through that sort of process. I was on that route for quite a while. It took me six tries in total. It took me quite a while compared to the other routes here. And every single try I fell on the same move. And then when I stuck that move on, the, on my sixth try, that was, that was the time that I went to the top. So yeah. I've really enjoyed my time here in Flatanger. It's been great to climb with such a psych group of people and it's definitely given me some fresh psych and motivation for the upcoming World Cups and then training and climbing at home over the winter. <laughs>